Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 1 Legendary Edition. I've been recording for several hours. <laughs> Looking for supplies? Yes. Let's see what you, you got. Bet. You bet. Uh oh now oh there's some freaking more like Quarian armor. When does that ever happen? Never What else do you have? We still have though, we still have the such low quality freaking eleven. Oh, I don't know. Compare. I mean it's not that much better. Uh, I like I like Tally's current armor. She got the Colossus. Once, once you go Colossus, you never go back. My ship is beautiful. You have anything else to say, Adams? Something I can do for you, Commander. I think we're. I think there's nothing else. We've asked all these. I think. He said he's based. Served on like every ship. Blah blah blah. I want to know more about the Normandy. She's the best ship I've ever served on. Probably the fastest vessel ever designed. She's the only one using the new Tantalus Drive Core. What's so special about the Tantalus Drive Core? Proportionally, it's about right, twice right. the size of any other vessel. Not only are we faster, but we can run at FDL speeds longer before we have to discharge the core. Hey, I love Carry that. on, Adams. Aye, aye. I like Adams. He's very nice. He's like Tally's second dad. I appreciate him. Shepard, I'm glad you're here. Good to see you smiling again. So <laughs> I'm sleeping much better now. I guess I'm getting used to how quiet your ship is. I still think a lot about my pilgrimage, though. Uh... I know Scarlet's our top priority, but with all the worlds we go to, I was hoping to find something to bring back to the flotilla. This is a precursor. We've still got a long way to go. You'll find something to take back. Yes, but it cannot just be some derelict ship my people can use for salvage. It has to be more than that. There's a lot expected of me. What's so special about you? <laughs> it's my father. He's the senior member of the Admiralty Board. He's one of only five people who can overrule the decisions of the Conclave for the good of the migrant fleet. My father is responsible for the lives of 17 million people. Our entire race is in his hands, and I'm his only child. You're really? And I'm his only child. Well, yeah, most of you have only one kid, for the most part. So are you some kind of heir to the Quarrel? <laughs> No, it doesn't work that She's way. like, no, you idiot. My father's position isn't hereditary. I'll probably never serve uh, on the board myself. You think so? Officially, I'm just the same as any other citizen. But it doesn't work that way in practice. People have always treated me differently because of who my father is. You could probably say preferential treatment, but also, I don't... I, and I think she said it doesn't really work that way. Like, you're, you're expected to do more in that position, even though it's not a position she asked for, you know? You must get all kinds of special privileges. I probably had it easier than most growing up, but it's not all good. People like my father have enemies, and they're not above using me to get to him. Like, she recognizes that she probably did, like, she did have privileges, you know, like that other people didn't have, but uh, it's also a very high pressure environment to be born into. That must be tough on you. My people place a high value on family and ancestry. There's an unspoken expectation that I'll live up to my father's example. She's so culturally keen. Everyone's waiting for me to do something great on my pilgrimage. Something that will forever change our lives for the better. I mean, defeating Saren. If I don't, it's like I failed. And that reflects badly on both me and my father. The work you're doing here is more important than anything any Quarian's ever done before. Yes, I know. But you have to understand <laughs> Quarian culture. We're a very insular society. The events beyond the flotilla don't much matter to the average citizen. Our greatest dream is that one day we'll return to our homeworld and drive out the Geth. But even if we stop Saren, that's not going to happen. There's still millions of Geth behind the veil. Until they're gone, our exile will continue. What would you need to bring back to make everyone happy? Something that would help us better understand the Geth. They've changed significantly since the exile. They've continued to evolve. We've done our best to study them, but it's not easy. They're very reclusive. Until recently, they never went beyond the borders of the Vale. And all the Geth we run into now are under Saren's control. 
We'd need to find Geth operating on their own, independently. But I don't want this to get in the way of our mission, Shepard. First, we stop Seren. Then I'll worry about my own problems. Let's talk about your dad. What was your father like? It wasn't easy growing up as the daughter of one of the Admiralty. Even before he joined the board, he was a prominent figure. People looked to him for leadership. He had to set an example, and he expected the same of his daughter. Plus, he was pretty strict, a military man through and through. He never allowed me to settle for anything less than excellence. As a kid, I sometimes felt like he was pushing me too hard. But now, I'm old enough to appreciate what he taught me. The world doesn't owe us anything. If we want something in life, we have to earn it. Yeah, but, you you know, your, your dad can also, like, cut you some slack as a kid. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to... You don't have to prepare a perfect adult in a small child's body, you know? Like, let kids be kids for at least a bit. Like, if you can. Like, if you're in a privileged enough position to be able to do that. Where was your mother in all this? Mother was around, but she always seemed to kind of blend into the background. Almost like she was overshadowed by my father. He tends to do that to people. She passed on about five years ago. Some airborne virus that swept through the fleet. Happens sometimes when the filters start to break down. I think my father took it pretty hard. After she was gone, he became even more focused on his work. I think that was his way of dealing with the grief. She- it's such a weird way- <sighs> Somebody pointed out once, and I'll have to see if I can find the article, maybe, but they're like, all the women in Mass Effect have these strange, like, daddy issues. And, like, absent mother figures. Like, Tally's mother just doesn't matter to her. Like, despite her having been alive for most of her life. Um, and then she's got daddy issues. And Liara... You could say he's got daddy issues because she doesn't know who her, like, uh, I guess the, the father, air quotes, of her, you know, the other, the other, um, Asari is. Plus her mom is dead now, uh, basically by her own hand. Uh, well, Ashley, Ashley doesn't have daddy issues, but Ashley's dad is dead. I think her mom's still around. Um, and in the next game, Miranda, boy, does she have daddy issues and no mother. She's a test tube, baby. Um, like, no, like, mother birthed her. She has, like, genetic material from others, from, like, two or three different mothers. Um, who else do we have in that game? Um, uh, Samara doesn't have daddy issues. <laughs> but, like, is it... Yeah, it's just, like, the romanceable women. Like, I don't know. Whoever was in charge of writing the characters in Mass Effect, and particularly the women, just really seemed to get off on daddy issue daughters. Like, it's just... Like, don't get me wrong. I love these characters very much. But particularly the women <laughs> seem to have been, like, just kind of shoehorned into a particular fetish, almost, you know? It's just like, eh, a little bit, eh. <laughs> Sounds like a tough upbringing. You don't resent your father at all? Like I said, it wasn't easy. My father's not the kind of person you bond with, and he wasn't around all that much. Too busy. People counted on him, and he took his duties seriously, even when he was around. He always seemed a bit distant, like his mind was always somewhere else. Come to think of it, I can't ever remember seeing him smile. Not once. It's like he was always weighed down by all that responsibility. I mean, also, you... I mean, I know he cares about You guys have faceplates. But he never really showed it, not in the usual way. I guess the best thing I can say about my father is that I respect him. The Quarians can go around without their suits on but it's under sp very specific circumstances it's not just like they walk around their ships they always wear their suits all the time unless it's in very specific circumstances i just feel like her mother got shafted in this whole story i just it's just as did Benezia. <laughs> they both got really like they didn't know how to these guys and potentially like the gals who were on the crew as well like on the writing crew as well 
uh, who probably, you know, even if they'd wanted to change something, probably got over overtalked and overruled, but, uh, anyway, the people who wrote this, and who were in charge of this, in particular, um, just really didn't know how to write mothers and just killed them off as fast as possible. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know, it says more about the person in charge than it does anything else. Um, yeah. I want to talk about something else. Like what? I think that's it. Anyway, we now have the go. hint. See you later. For, we don't. Like, there's no quest. Tally's is kind of a stealth quest, honestly, and I think it has something to do with the Geth Activities one. You have to go into, like, four different systems within a cluster, I think, to, like, track down the Geth. Like, that she, particular, the particular Geth she wants. Like, why a lone, like, a Geth not under Sarah's control would be out, like, makes no sense, but, you know, it is what it is. Let's go. So that's everybody. There's nobody hiding in any corner. I know in Dragon Age Inquisition, I would always forget to talk to um, Vivian and Cassandra uh, because they're off in corners by themselves, not not near any thoroughfares. Vivian especially is just like up on a balcony that you never walk through. Um, so I would always, not always, but, like, I did often forget to speak to her, and it was like, whoopsie daisy to catch up on a bunch of, like, you know, like, three different main missions worth of dialogue with her. Um, and Cassandra, I would forget, too, because, like, I would pass kind of near where she is, but I wouldn't necessarily pass her. So it would be, it was just, like, this weird... Her and Kepler Verge. Like, I don't know, I just never saw her directly. Oh, wait. Damn. Oh, I can't go down. Frick, they're being so weird about Novaria. I swear you could talk. I swear you could have talked to those people. And I got Paragon for it. I could have sworn you could talk to Han Olar at least out in the like he like looks at the tram where the woman died that he knew, you know? Maybe I've ruined everything, alas. If I already passed it without realizing it. Kepler Verge. Okay. These are such beautiful nebula. Nebulae? Eh? Oh, maybe I... I just realized. Dang it. I couldn't land here because I was already here. I forget they don't just yee out into space. All I had to do was walk out the door. Message coming in. Figures. Patching it through. Thought. Commander, I'm glad you're in the uh, area. We've got an emergency situation, what? and you're the only one I can trust to get the job Again? Done. Do you? Am I? Do, it's just. <laughs> it happens so frequently that I'm just like, have you guys just like been sitting on your hands this whole time? Like once you trained me up, you were like, now we're good. We got one perfect soldier. And we're gonna make her do everything. Like, is there, there has, there are other people in the military besides me. How can I help, Admiral? Biotic fanatics have hit a medical research station with a psychotropic drug. The drugs have temporarily driven researchers crazy, and the biotics are effectively using them as human shields. So if I shoot everything that moves, a lot of researchers are gonna die. Exactly. A normal team could handle the biotics, but a lot of innocent researchers would die during the operation. That's why I contacted you. I'm hoping you can keep the casualties to a minimum. You can cut all me, Grandpa. I'll do everything within my power to bring those researchers back safely, Admiral. I know you will, Commander. I'm sending you the station coordinates now. Fifth fleet out. Bye, hang on. I'll, be, I'll be right back. Hopefully I edit this out.
My crew thought they escaped Novaria. And I'm like, JK, go back. Uh, sure, we'll just bring, we, we had these two with us, so we'll just bring them again. Equalizing yeah. interior pressure with exterior atmosphere. Logged. The commanding officer is ashore. Why is the Exo Presley has the deck. Why is the VI my voice? I'm pretty sure it's Jennifer Hale anyway. Commander, I'm glad you stopped to talk. I wanted to tell you how unfortunate it was that Analeas Sama was caught with his hand in the cookie jar. <laughs> Rest assured, I bear you no ill will. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Unfortunate. He was a criminal, Captain. The executive board is not concerned with galactic law, Commander. That's why this planet was settled, after all. As far as they are concerned, Analeas Sama went too far. On Ovaria, you may do what you wish so long as you do not disturb public order. I only request that you limit the number of disturbances you provoke. I would consider it a favor. Mm. I don't intend to make life difficult for anyone. I appreciate that, Commander. If you'll excuse me, oh. I must file reports of this incident. Good day. Uh, I, I think I was supposed to encounter her in a different place than this. Cause she was like, I'm gonna walk away now, and then she did not walk away. Anyway, I don't really know. I just wanna double check and see if anybody's come out of the labs. Cause there was also supposed to be fallout that would hit here too, like, and like minimal damage to the surrounding area. And I was like, hold up. Hold up, what? But then that never really, that doesn't usually play out at all. This place also reminds me of a book series that I've read a gazillion times, The Murderbot Diaries. I highly recommend, let me just keep continuing referencing, or recommending books. The Murderbot Diaries is an excellent sci-fi series that I've literally read like 8,000 times. I listen to it to go to bed. Uh, but I also, I, uh, I pre-order them and then get them downloaded ASAP and just sit there and listen to them. <laughs> there's like, there's, there's four novellas, a novel, and then another novella. Um, that's the chronological order. Uh, there's sci-fi, and they're just so good. It's like kind of like a corporate, like a corp, like there's a very corporatized future, but there's still like a segment of the galaxy that's like not corporatized that you kind of learn about, but you learn about it through the eyes of a construct that was created by the very corporatized segment of the galaxy. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's ultra capitalistic. Like, people are literally just like cogs in a machine kind of stuff. Like, it's, it's harsh. Been a while since I've seen you. What brings you back? Repairs. Vehicle repairs, of course. That's what I like to hear. What? Let's see what you need. What? Can you. I can't, vehicle repairs, of course. What do you mean? Can you repair my vehicle? I think my vehicle's fine. I can't go back out there. Okay, I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't gonna go all the way back to the labs anyway. But ah, well, I'll have to look it up online and see if I if Han Olar was supposed to show up at the at the thingamajig or not. And I guess, uh, Parasini wouldn't be here anymore because they're all done with the investigation, so she doesn't need to be an undercover secretary anymore. I guess I could check the... here. I can't imagine anybody would be just chilling here from the labs, because, uh, they all need to go to, like, trauma care. She's like, she's like, she's like a caressing there, like caressing hair she doesn't have. God dang. Yeah, nobody's here. I don't know, maybe I edit this out. This is, oh, wait, wait, wait. Hang on, let me go up here. I'm sorry. 
The hotel is off limits to those without a corporate account. Okay. Don't hang up. Elder brother, it's me. I'm on the very end. I can't talk long. This call is costing 10 credits a minute. It's real time from the Traverse. Do you think it would be cheap? I need some information. There's an issue here with synthetic insights. The manager, Laura Keen, he got caught with his toes wet. The office is closed by a pensions administrator. I, I need you to see what you can find out about. Are you ready for his name? Ronadrill Gan Swa Fosum Karathi Nar Diedi Bellamalayas. No, that's the administrator. The Hanshin administrator. No, think about it. A Turian wouldn't risk getting his office closed. They don't compromise their team. That's drilled into the bamboo camp. I think the administrator is using this keen fella to draw flies from his own clutch. Of course I could look it up myself. But do you think I'm likely to get any unfiltered data through Novaria's own network? That, and it would take forever for any out-system search results to get back here. Thank you, Elder Brother. I have to go. Yes. I'll speak to you soon. Like, you think this wouldn't be monitored, too? Oh, I forgot this guy's up here. I Hang on. I don't, I don't remember what he does exactly. Read it. Maybe, oh, I probably messed it up. Oh, I messed it up. Dang. I can't, I think it's Renegade. I can't remember what he does. Dang it. Oops. Eh. Oh, yeah. It's imperative you make your way to the safe location. Your ears with their organization has been leaked. Your base and Newton system is no longer secure. Make your way to the safe location immediately. Whoa, more sneaky stuff that we're finding. Oh, I can't remember what he does. Like he, there's like a quest associated with him, but I think I already like I, I've completed everything here, so it's probably like blocked it from happening. But anyway, there's a quest up here. If you've never played, don't be a noob like me and forget that there's an upstairs here because they hide the stairs behind fake-looking stairs. Oh, anyway, hopefully I time travel you guys back to the ship. Oh, real quick, I guess for anybody who hasn't played, uh, that long name for the Solarian, not unusual. Every single Solarian's name is like 20 names long. And it like indicates like their freaking, oh, where am I going? And that was right. Uh, like their planet of origin, the, the cluster of origin, the like city, town, county, you know, fa like then there was like four different individual family names, like, and then the, like, not individual names, but four different family names, plus an individual name at the end. So basically their name tells you exactly where they're from, and like, who they're related to. Which is important, um, because Solarians have interesting breeding practices. And so, they have to very much know who you are and who you're related to. And they have extensive databases, you find out about it more in Mass Effect 2, extensive ancestor databases and like family what is not mine family tree databases let me ship oh there she is. okay it would be so cold in here uh in order to prevent um inbreeding stand by shore party decontamination in progress Logged. The commanding officer is aboard. Exo Presley stands relieved. I think technically Caden's actually the next in charge, but he could come out with you, so Exo Presley here gets it. Well, Caden might be right underneath him technically. I'm not sure. 
Right. Ooh, the message was intercepted by Novara's security. Oh. Anyway, I think we will actually. Yeah, we'll go back. I'll I'll trans I'll time travel us over there. So I think I'll call this video here. It might be a little bit short, but the last one was pretty long. So uh, I guess it kind of balances out. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. And this is the part of the video where I say thank you once again to my patrons who are sapling tier and above because they get individual calls at the end of the video. So thank you so much, Scala Munger, my first patron. And a just patron extraordinaire in general, thank you so, so much for your patronage. And I want to thank Reese Calito, who also... Uh, was it, what do you say, um, I'm, not, I'm trying to use, like, Twitch terms, uh, became a patron, uh, on the first day I put out the video announcing I had a patron, so thank you so, so much for your support, it's honestly, it's been, I wasn't expecting, I, I've said it before, but I wasn't expecting such a, like, I mean, it's even just, like, three people, I don't know, I'm not making any sense, I'm starting to get tired again, I'm running into that same problem I was before, anyway, I'm, I'm so sorry. This is so awkward. Thank you so much, Dries Scalito, so much for being a patron on a sap the Sapling Patron. And thank you again, Scalamugger, for being a Sapling Patron. I appreciate both of you. And an extra special thank you to Christopher, who is a tree tier patron and who is extra special, awesome tree uh, of whatever sort you would like to be. <laughs> but uh, thank you all so much for being patrons. Thank you to everybody else for watching the video. I really do appreciate your support in that way, in that way as well. And I hope to see you all on the next video.